This is exactly right. Hello. Hi. And welcome to the My Favorite Murder Minisode. Where we tell you your stuff. Real Emails. Quick. Emails. Emails. That's about it. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we get started, two things real quick. Uh, today, Monday, November 5th, is the day that the pre-sale tickets for our fucking winter 2019 tour, which we just announced, go on sale for the, for fan, the fan cult. cult only. So if you're a part of the fan cult, go get your tickets. If you're not... Remember, there's only a certain amount of tickets, even if you're in the fan cult. Tickets, pre-sale, fan cult, my go favorite order, dot Good com. luck. Go on. Roll the line. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, the other announcement is that uh, please go vote tomorrow. Mm. It's very important, even if you think it's not. Please don't think it's not, because it absolutely is in every way, shape, and form. That's right. It's a necessity of life. And if you're listening to this podcast, chances are that we need you on you people on our side. Yes, and don't get um, don't get uh convinced by all the early voting video that you keep seeing on social media and on the news making it think like oh everyone's going to take care of it for me yeah and i can just kind of sail through this it's it's a show up time it's put up uh and shut up time for this country it is and i mean even if you live in let's say like a totally blue state it's still really important to uh exercise your civic fucking duty and your your responsibility as a goddamn american citizen well and also it seems like we really need to make sure that things Things happen so that, like, say, for example, they don't make being transgender illegal. Right. Like, it's things like that you have to think about other people and you have to think about instead of making an excuse of why not to do something, yeah. realize why you need to do it. Or, like, if you live in a red state and you're, you're blue, think of, like, you can just get those percentages up a little, get those fucking, that, a little closer. To, have your voice you be know? heard. Exactly. It's important. It's really important. Please do it. Um, do you want me to start? Sure. I'm holding my paper up so I get to start. <laughs> All right. So this is, uh, we're reading you some, um, hometowns from Atlanta and Austin, which is where we will be visiting this weekend. That's right. The last, the week- last weekend of our fall tour, which is mind boggling. So crazy. It's been such a fun tour. Thank you to all the cities. In the beginning, uh, I was really good about after we would do shows, mm. doing a fun retweet and a thank you. By the end, I'm like, I can't remember what city we were in. So tired. So the last, so the last couple rounds, the NorCal rounds of Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, and San Francisco, Oakland, and Sacramento. That's right. I don't think anybody, except for the Sacramento Paul Holes specialty, I don't think anybody got a special oh, yeah. tweet, we love you. But we really do. We've had, we've been having the best time. That's right. Thank you. <clears throat> and LA, of course. Oh, and of course, LA and Halloween. Halloween? All right. The subject line of this email is, <laughs> we haven't done a live show in a while. No, a real show, you mean? Yeah, like a, like a, oh, a real you live? and me and Steve in the, in the pod loft sure. show. No, it's been a while. It's quiet. Yeah. And it's small. I don't have any makeup on. Thank God. Mm. Um, I don't have any scrubs on. <laughs> okay, so the subject line is Ant's story. Uh, hi, y'all. Spelled Ant like your uncle's wife. Got it. This one takes place in Tyler, Texas, a sweet, innocent little town in East Texas, where my mom grew up for part of her life. When my mom was a few years old in, her late, in the late 50s, her older sister, my aunt, who was around 12 at the time, was left to babysit my mom and her other young siblings while their parents went out on a date. The 50s, am I right? They didn't have central air, so it was common practice in that time to leave the windows open around the house to create a nice cross breeze. Of course. While leaving the screens in to keep the bugs out. Uh, Like a normal, ideal world. How windows work. Um, (laughs) While the kids are playing, my aunt hears the phone ring and answers, and an older man very politely asks, Hi, sweetie, is your dad home? And my aunt responds, No, he's out with my mom right now. Oh, no, no. He hangs up. (gasps) That's all he needed to hear. That's right. Not long after this phone call, my aunt is sitting in the living room waiting for my grandparents to come home when she hears something coming from the window nearby. (sighs) Not unusual, as there were lots of animals around. She glances up to see what little critter is making the commotion and instead she sees a large man standing outside the window he's holding a knife oh my god my aunt froze he lifts the knife gingerly to the screen and pierces through it preparing to make a long slit to climb through holy shit he's grinning (gasps) my aunt screams 
Suddenly, he's fully illuminated from behind by a blinding light. My grandparents were pulling up the driveway. Oh, my God. The man quickly conceals the knife and whirls around. My grandfather steps out and immediately confronts the man, who claims to be lost. A policeman patrolling the area approaches what? to see what the situation is. Oh, this is. guy's having a real bad day. The man says, oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was Dr. McDonald's house. The officer believed him. No. And chuckling at what he thinks is a quirky mistake quickly points him to the correct house down the street. No, no. The man cheerily thanks the officer and walks away toward the other family's home. No questioning, no search. They just let him walk away. Mm, Great. It wasn't until my grandparents spoke to my aunt and saw the cut screen that they understood what actually happened. They never caught the guy. Anyway, stay sexy and close your fucking windows. Can't wait to see y'all in Austin soon. Best, Meredith. Yep. The smiling part. Smiling. Smiling. Smiling at the little 12-year-old girl inside the house. That I just called and asked if your family was home. Oh, Oh, Jesus. That's why no one answers the phone anymore. That's right. No one can be trusted. Nobody. Okay. This one's called People Tell Their Pastors Everything. Ooh. Hey, team. (laughs) Long-time listener, first-time caller. I'm a pastor in Atlanta, and recently I went to lunch with a member of my congregation. He's the sweetest older man who is super smart and always tells the best stories. So we're driving back to the church, and we start talking about the criminal justice system. Jay is a lawyer by trade, which makes conversations like this super interesting. Somehow we get on the topic of of big criminal cases in the city, obviously being a murderino and a true crime junkie I can't help myself so I asked Jay what he remembers about the Atlanta child murders oh shit he talks about how terrified the city was and how now people aren't so sure about Wayne Williams involvement Mm -hmm. he's going on and on about fiber evidence and the kind of and I kind of start to zone out when suddenly he says you know my daughter was kidnapped during the height of this (gasps) It was so casual, like he was commenting on the weather. And I'm thinking, dear God, what have I just stumbled into? He proceeds to tell me that in 1980, his seven-year-old daughter was walking home from school one afternoon when a man drove up alongside her, pulled her into his car, and drove her out of the neighborhood. Apparently, this little girl was a badass, though, and she wasn't having any of this shit. She starts asking him who he is and where they're going over and over again. And when the man doesn't answer, she starts screaming and kicking at the passenger window. Yes. Fully losing her shit and fighting back. The kidnapper gets so frustrated with her that he pulls over and shoves her out of the car <laughs> into Piedmont Park. Seven year, seven year old badass marches up to the first adult she finds in the park and gives them her name and the name of her parents and then informs them that she was kidnapped. Police are called and within the hour she's returned to her parents. The would be kidnapper was picked up a few days later, arrested and convicted. Shit. Jay's daughter is alive and well with a family of her own because she's a freaking rock star and even at seven knew how to SSDGM. Yes. I could go on and on about Jay and his freaking amazing stories, like how his brother was the defense attorney for Richard Jeweler, the security guard initially accused of the Atlanta child uh, I'm sorry Atlanta Olympic bombings Richard Jewell Jewell yeah. thank you yeah. not jeweler <laughs> that, that was what he did by trade excuse but me it wasn't his name <laughs> <laughs> or any of my other weird and wonderful church members like the rare book collector who owns a bible that belonged to a woman who was executed for witchcraft in Salem yes we affectionately call it the witch bible yes my church is a dope collection of smart loving fascinating kick ass humans needless to say I love being their pastor Aww. Thank you so much for all the stuff you do. You know you're awesome. Nobody likes a kiss ass. Anyway, can't wait to see you in Atlanta in November. Blessings and peace. E. That's Aww. so awesome. So nice. Thank I, you. I am surprised by having a, a pastor um, listener. I am too. Thank you for tolerating. Thank you for being the middleman between me and Jesus. <laughs> um, I don't even know what I'm saying. Okay. The subject of this one is the death of the lemur man. Dear Sexy Crew, my best friend growing up lived on a picturesque horse farm where we spent many hours traipsing around in dress up, probably riding horses and pretending we were elves and Lord of the Rings or whatevs. Anyways, uh, their next door farm neighbors were hella weird. So naturally, we were always trying to spy on them like the nosy kids we were. (laughs) We were mostly interested in them because they had lemurs and llamas and a bunch of other weird animals. We never saw anything that interesting, but we loved gossiping about how weird they were. (laughs) <laughs> Last year, my mom casually mentioned that she'd recently caught up with my friend's mom, and she mentioned that their next-door neighbor had died in a weird choking accident. Mm-hmm. His wife was devastated and had sold the farm. My friend's mom didn't think anything of it until she saw this on the news. A year later, had this lady married to the lemur man had moved to California. 
married a man high up in the Google Corporation, hmm? and he too had <gasps> mysteriously died in a choking accident. Nope, 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 nope. However, this guy had cameras all over his house, and <gasps> even though she pled innocent and acted horrified, the camera caught her giving her husband a drink, and then casually cleaning her nails and swinging her feet while watching her husband choke to death on the poison she put in the drink. What? It turns out this girl had grown up in a wealthy family in Atlanta, but had a fun little hobby of killing off boyfriends and husbands and as soon as she got them to put her in their wills. Holy shit. I think this was maybe her fourth or fifth man that she had killed. Stay sexy and maybe don't own a lemur from farm in Georgia, Lexa. Oh my god, the image of watching a video where the woman is just doing her fucking nails yes. while he chokes to death. Horrible. And then can you imagine choking and your loved one is doing nothing and you're like, oh no. That's when you realize as you're on your way out. Yeah. You're like, shoot. Shoot. That's why I had that weird vibe around her. That's why she begged me about the will. <laughs> oh, so bad. that's awful. <laughs> okay, this one's called Stay Sexy and Always Keep a Can of Peas in Your Purse. Mm. Hiya, lovely humans and furry friends. Let's jump the fuck in. Mm. On a recent trip home to see my sweet baby angel mom, I asked her to pull out a, all of the photos she could find with the purpose of spending an afternoon drinking beer and reminiscing on, on her childhood and my own. I highly suggest everyone who can, who can does this because it was a lovely trip down memory lane and I learned so much about my mom and her youth including that her friends uh, that her and her friends really liked to moon and flip the bird <laughs> to the camera in yep. their 30s <laughs> my hero with a beer in her hand and her friends bare ass by her side you guys are getting into mooning the camera in your 30s <laughs> it's kind of amazing <laughs> Like not your 20s. Once you start a family yeah. and then you just need to blow off some steam. It's time. Mm -hmm. Anyways, while going through her old photos, I would every now and then ask, who's this whenever I didn't recognize a friend or a family member with her? On one of those questions, she surprised me when her voice dropped and she said that this bright, beautiful woman was her cousin, Marilyn, who was murdered by an ex-fiance. Like, oh, didn't I tell you? No, mom, you didn't, in all caps. Apparently, Marilyn was one of her closest friends, and my mom was prepared to be her bridesmaid, puffy pink dress and all, in her upcoming wedding to a jobless, jealous loser. While Marilyn got hip to his BS and broke off the engagement, after which he stalked her for several weeks before tragically stabbing her to death in a dark alleyway. Oh, my God. Don't worry, they caught the monster, and he's still rotting away in jail, or maybe Maybe he's dead. Who even cares? It was pretty incredible to talk to my mom about her experience losing a close friend and family member in such a horrific way and made me admire her strength even more. One thing that sticks out to me in the story is that my mom vividly remembers Marilyn's mother never recovering from the loss of her daughter and eventually becoming a homeless wanderer for the rest of Ugh. her days. Oh, no. I know, who always kept a can of peas in her purse for whenever she was hungry. She had offered those peas to my mother on many occasions. Anyways, I really do love and appreciate you two fantastic humans. Your podcast got me through two month, the two month process of leash training my very stubborn hound dog <laughs> with minimal frustration crying. Uh, I'm so excited to see you in Austin in November with my mom. Stay sexy and don't forget to keep a can of peas in your purse just in case, Sam. Oh, not sad. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Um, here's my last one. The subject line is my arsonist cousin plays Jesus in the MF in Christmas play. <laughs> Hello, all. Uh, we all have creepy cousin. Mine just, mine just happens to be an arsonist. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We're right in it. Growing up, my mom always said that she had a bad feeling about my cousin. Uh, he was my only cousin on that side of the family that was my age, so we went to the same youth group. We all knew never to hang out with him one-on-one, -on -one, and we avoided his church hugs like the gosh damn plague. In December 2017, he played Jesus in the Christmas play, so my parents were all, uh, my parents and all my aunts and uncles thought maybe he'd turn out okay. Mm. Holy shit were, shit, were they dead ass wrong. Um, he always loved attention, so naturally he was stoked out of his mind to play Jesus in the Christmas play. The following February, he was on the news in a neighboring county because he was a witness to a series of four fires in a trailer park. Mm -mm. He comes on the news and says, I just hope that whoever this person is, either you turn yourself in or they find the person. And then he proceeds to show the news people how he kicks in the door of one of the burning trailers after calling 911. Oh my God. I'm assuming all the attention from playing Jesus went to his head. <laughs> <laughs> the very next day, police tracked the fires back to the motherfucker <laughs> jesus motherfucker and one of them was a trailer that belongs to another one of our cousins yes he <gasps> set the fires for the sole purpose of pretending to help put them out and getting a news interview on the news wow. station that cannot uh have more than 600 viewers <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Needless to say, the people at church went crazy when they found out that he had played Jesus in the Christmas play. A deacon literally thanked the Lord our church didn't get set on fire during a Sunday morning prayer. Now he's facing 20 years in prison, uh, much like many other members of my family. <laughs> <laughs> um, God bless the South and plane tickets out of Atlanta that have taken me far away after graduating from high school. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, thanks for making every car ride fun and less anxiety ridden f- than before. My best friend Olivia and I love you guys and dream of seeing you live all the time. Stay sexy and don't play Jesus in a Christmas play <laughs> if you plan on setting a trailer park on fire. <laughs> Annie. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, should I do one more? Yeah. Okay. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go by. A sex shop, an office, and a sad day at work. Funny found in Wall Story. <laughs> Hi all in Podloft. Oh. Uh. I'm so excited because my life is so goddamn boring, but I finally have a reason to email. So, okay, I was at Dragon Con this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Had a great time. You guys should go. All right. <laughs> and I got to this great conversation with a couple of people at the bar. This guy launches into the story about the strangest thing he has found in a wall while working at this building in Atlanta. All I'm thinking is, fuck yeah, I will steal this and send it straight <laughs> to Karen in Georgia. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't steal. I told him I was going to email this. So he explains that he was working in this building and his boss uh, says we have to make a hole in this wall to run a line or something along those lines whatever the fuck people do in offices <laughs> when he makes the initial hole the best fucking thing fell out and then dot 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 a goddamn giant dildo what? <laughs> shocked and honestly not sure what to do next he asks his boss about it and the boss explains the office used to be owned by a sex shop that i think did films, not sure, not important. Anyway, they end up losing the space and just left a bunch of shit, both accidental and on purpose. Somehow, and no one quite knows why, this dildo ended up in the wall where a hole was made. But don't go, don't worry, it gets better. This man had to spend his work days for the next two weeks removing tons of fucking dildos out of the wall. What? I guess someone decided fuck it and just made a hole and threw them in there. <laughs> he couldn't remember how many he took out, but it was like the strangest thing he has ever found in the wall. <laughs> I don't remember the building. He told me, but I was a few Jack and Gingers in. Well, I hope you guys got a chuckle out of that. Stay sexy and maybe just keep your dildos in your nightstand drawer, Danielle. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone was like a disgruntled worker and they were just like, fuck you. Fuck, I'm not fucking, I'm not going to shelve these dildos. Cause you're, you know, when you work in retail, you know, you have to put stuff out. Yeah. So even you're saying, dildos, like, you just don't feel like working anymore. So if you pretend that the stock doesn't exist, yes. you don't have to put it out. Yes. Cause I was thinking maybe they were old testers. Oh. They were just like, oh, we're not going to put them in the dishwasher. Just put them in the wall. <laughs> dishwasher. <laughs> Do people clean their... Okay. <laughs> no. Haven't you ever seen that at like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those like sex parties. Dishwasher safe. They're <laughs> just like, what's Can less you, sexy? Like, and also more like, could you imagine if someone's like, oh, I'm going to get a cup yeah, for my tea. Right. And they're like, no, good, no, no. Yeah, but also dishwashers can't be 99% effective, right? Like, you've got to have a little bit of salmonella left on that. What if you get like... This, what if Listen. your vagina falls off because you get salmonella poisoning because you wash or for it. any other reason for Just any reason let's start fearing the worst <laughs> that your vagina like it's a like it's a stereo face from the 90s that you can remove that it just will drop off of your right body. like your lego piece because <laughs> like a lego piece vagina and it just 
Oh, no. And you accidentally, like, it falls off, and then you step on it. Uh, hurts your foot so bad. How embarrassing. And then you're like, do you want some Ow. tea? And then you open your dishwasher, and there's all your <laughs> no! dildos in there. My private things that I put in the dishwasher. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, send just your stories to my favorite murder at Gmail. Uh, don't forget to vote. Don't forget to buy your tickets on a fan cult, like and we told you. Don't forget to stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis. Mimi? <gasps> it's your big chance, Mimi. Mimi, you want a cookie? Nah. Did that work? Oh, oh good girl. The tiniest. The tiny meow.